Okay, so here comes the first question from me. Right, I mentioned that's the way it will go. So, what's your experience about this first ever eclipse summit in India? You're welcome to raise your hands or you can leave it to chance to me. Okay, one, two. okay, very good. That's great. In fact, that's exactly one of the objectives, right? The eclipse is not just about the IDE. And Although this is something we have to stress we, we again do, and again. We do love the IDE. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's why that not just. So Mike, you want to add on that? That's a great topic to begin with in terms of what eclipse is all about, right? I mean, I know you covered part of it in the keynote, but. Sure, uh, what, what is eclipse all about? Uh, <laughs> that's a lot, that's a. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, two minutes, you have two minutes. Yeah, you have all day. Um, look, the, the main, the role that the foundation plays is to provide a s place where projects can come to build software. And what we offer is a set of resources, some infrastructure, uh, the intellectual property management, and the processes to help projects become mature um, so that they can be successfully adopted. The measure of success for an Eclipse project is not just like writing a lot of code and writing some cool stuff. The measure of success is do people actually use it, right? Um, so it's so that's the kinds of things that we help with. Um, but and I've been doing this. So I've been the executive director for 12 years. And when when I first started 12 years ago, the definition of what an Eclipse project was was really simple. Um, but I mean, the day I started, it was an Eclipse project was an IDE plugin. That was on May 20th. Then in June, we shipped Eclipse 3.0, and all of a sudden, RCP became a thing, the rich client platform. So then it was an Eclipse project is an Eclipse plugin, which is written in Java and uses OSGI. And then about a year or two, I think the next year, they carved out Equinox as an OSGI framework, and then an Eclipse project became written in Java, could be server-side, Java and OSGI, and anything that was Java and OSGI could be an Eclipse project. And then a couple of years came along, and then Orion came along, and after a while, we just gave up and said, if you are willing to follow our development process, be part of our community, participate with our intellectual property management processes, you can be an Eclipse project no matter what language you're programming in or what your target area is. Then we had a completely different problem, which is when you say that, that's a very big space. And that's when we started coming up with the idea of the working groups, which was to provide sort of a, uh, a way for people who were interested in a single domain to find each other. Um, so things like IoT and science and location tech and polar sys, I mean really a, a lot of what that is is for both the people and the companies that are interested in a particular domain area, whether it's Internet of Things or scientific computing or um, embedded systems development to be able to just find each other and share their common interests and put together um, some projects that are helping tackle a particular problem. So kind of a longer than two minutes, but sort of an That's idea. <laughs> I have a question for the panel. Uh, if you had a time machine and if you could go back in time What's the one thing that you would do differently on the Eclipse project? Uh, that's a question to all the panelists, so I would expect everyone to answer this one. <laughs> so you might have thought you would get a technical answer, no. but mine, mine is actually a social and cultural answer. If there's one thing I could do that go back into a time machine and, cha and change is beat the shit out of the IBM guys back in 2004 to be more open to outside contributions back then. 
because basically what happened, it was, it was an IBM only club for far too frickin' long until it became a crisis and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, can you please come and help? Um, and so uh, it, it would have been a lot better for everybody if there were five companies, major investments in, in the Eclipse platform in 2005 as opposed to you know, waiting into after 2010. Would have completely changed the dynamic of the project, and yeah, it would have been a big pain in the butt for at the beginning, um, but it would have um, been a much better outcome. Because <laughs> he was actually there. Everybody has their own interpretation of history. <laughs> uh, I would well. I would say that the cultural problem has been solved. I I mean, if you look at um, the pie chart of contributions now for the Eclipse Platform project, it's a very diverse project. Um, I mean, we still have a ways to go maybe with JDT itself, just particularly JDT UI, but I don't, like, back in 2005, it was a cultural problem, I, I think. Danny might disagree, but I, I think. Whereas now, it's like if people showed up that had the right set of skills and were willing to put a bunch of time into becoming uh, a committer on JDT UI, I think that they would be welcomed with open arms. Um, so. I think the cultural problem has been fixed. The resource problem has still got a long way to go. Yep. Yeah, but I, I would like go back to what I'd said a moment ago. I would consider like where we are now on the Eclipse platform is actually a major success story compared to where, we, yeah, platform UI, I think compared to where we were say five years ago, I think it's been phenomenal. Um, yeah, there's definitely uh, a few places, a few other places. And, and by the way, this is not unique to the Eclipse project. There are lots of other projects within the Eclipse community um, that are starved for, for resources and contributions. Um, you know, there's this myth, myth in open source that if we create a project, they will come. And that's actually, just so you know, that's a myth. I mean, if you want people to contribute to your project, you have to work hard to get people to contribute to your project. Help onboard them, make sure that they know that they're welcome, make sure that the documentation is there. I mean. I've had so many times in the last 12 years, I've had conversations where people say, I'm gonna create a new open source project. What's the number one thing I can do to help get contributions? Um, and they never do what I tell them to do, ever, which is you need, you need to have a hello world example where from, the, from within five minutes from downloading your project, somebody can actually get something running. Um, and that actually takes real work to do. But if you don't have people using your code, they're never, ever, ever going to contribute. Um, so the pipeline for contribution starts with getting people to use your stuff. Anyways, why am I the only guy talking on this panel? Sorry. Well, um, actually, also along the lines of um, like welcoming contributions and stuff, if I could go back in time, um, when we started the IoT initiative, I was actually not Eclipse at the time, not like uh, Eclipse Foundation. I was working for a different company. And um, yeah, if I could go back in time, I would actually like to have been able at the time to welcome the competition uh, in that what we were trying to achieve is build a community around IoT. And you don't get to pick a, the winner like in, term in terms of technology. Maybe my company at the time wanted or would have wanted some technology to, be, uh, to become uh, the, the, the de facto standard. Uh, but it turns out like if you really want to build a community not only of users but also of developers, contributors, then you need to make sure that whatever is the open source community you're trying to build, not only you you will try to push your project forward, but 
you need to work on some project that may be a, a competitor. And uh, that's why now, actually, at, at Eclipse IoT, there's like 25 different projects. And some of them, if you look closely, they are actually overlapping. And the one who's going to win, or the ones who, who are going to win, are going to be the ones uh, who welcome the, 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 the external contributions, who, who have the, the critical mass of contributors, et cetera. But you really need this diversity in order to, for the, the project to be successful. So I wish I would have realized that earlier. So when we start, start we, we keep trying to build a platform uh, for the use, and we saw one of the things, the application we didn't change it, and we didn't envision that there were also human users. So when we see an app layer for this for bank that might need that kind of build, then we also think that that's something we need to get super support for. Okay, that's a good one. That that's actually what number one on my list. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I would, um, um, in my opinion, we could have actually uh, played a, an active role, more active role in the cloud development space, right? For example, Eclipse kind of um, took the shape as a desktop environment, right? Not getting into the cloud development, cloud app development early on. So for example, we launched the Eclipse uh, cloud development project as a top level project, and there are projects part of it, right? It could have been done a few years earlier so that there is momentum. And see, the, inter the interesting point there is, there isn't one single environment that is winning the cloud app development space, right? There's a lot of fragmentation there. That was not the case when, um, when Eclipse came about as a Java development environment. Eclipse clearly was the winner. Right, even if there are other players involved, right? So that's a missed opportunity for us, in my opinion. Stefan? I actually want to say a little bit the opposite point of view uh, uh, versus the obstacle of people having the picture that Eclipse equals IBM and this was an obstacle to uh, contributions from outside. Uh, I guess it just happened uh, that, that I was among the first who didn't know about this uh, vision, this view that Eclipse I equals IBM. I was just looking at the code. I was hacking. Uh, back then, I was a researcher at university. I was hacking on compilers. I saw the uh, JDT compiler was a great compiler. Could use it for object teams. Great. Oh, there was a bug. And then I filed a bug report, filed another bug report, submitted a patch. And from that point in time, I felt extremely welcomed by the JDT core team uh, because they were appreciating the effort I was putting into working with that code base. And uh, at that level, I never felt that there was a real barrier against uh, contributors joining the team. And I think uh, ever since then, this cooperation has gone very well. And I'm very happy that just this year, uh, somebody was following exactly my steps uh, in JDT core. and. Uh, so we sp speak a lot about m m places to meet. Uh, and of course, the conferences are the number one place where you can connect and uh, join a team, uh, b become a member of everything else. But uh, for me, actually, the number one place uh, to become a member of this community was another place, which is Bugzilla. And Cooperation in Bugzilla is something that I learned in the early days and worked well. And nothing of this uh, path of contribution I would want to change, even with a time machine. Other questions from the participants? Okay, then here comes the next question for you. Ready? So what is that that you would like to see different in the neck like summit if it happens what will be different uh, uh, platforms that eclipse supports so that there can be uh, representatives from other like uh, php or uh, 
uh, the presenters who are actually uh, using Eclipse itself to develop their course. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, we did have some representation, but I could do better. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. What so. Else would you guys want differently? What else could be improved? Oh, you mean some kind of demo stations, right? Okay. It's good. Good feedback. <laughs> yeah, but what kind of hackathon? Do you want to do you want to write Eclipse plugins? Uh, do you want to write vertex verticals? Do you want to write IoT stuff? If you say we are having an Eclipse hackathon, what are we hacking it? What are we hacking on? Yeah, for those who didn't hear him, it was like anything that's sort of new at Eclipse that they you probably wouldn't know too much about something, and perhaps IoT would be one example. Like we have Eclipse uh, forum, so we will get a very uh, late response in Eclipse forum. So is there any uh, replacement for this Eclipse forum? We have a bug created for this also in Bugzilla. Like we have to use some. Uh, discourse or some other uh, kind of uh, you know, collaborative uh, platform. So yeah. it will be very good because lots of uh, questions asked on forum uh, will be answered in Stack Overflow <laughs> compared to Eclipse forum. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, the, the forum software that we have at Eclipse.org is not great. Um, I mean, it's it was a big step up I think from the old NNTP like the new the new stuff that we had years ago but um, a, a more modern system like discourse would be great to be honest th the only reason why we haven't done anything there is strictly just a lack of resources um, like if you look at what we have at eclipse.org um, you know we have a website that's huge it's sprawling we have like 300 plus projects each has their own website we have downloads um, we put out um, I can't remember what it is like 40 terabytes a month uh, pumped out of that website we have pr well the last month notwithstanding we have pretty good uptime and um, you know we have a huge community of stakeholders that always want this that or the other thing and we have three guys that keep it up um, so it's it's just strictly a lack of resources. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this course, um, but, um, and we'd, so we'd love to be able to do something better. It's just, we just don't have the people and the time so far to do it. Wish I had a better answer. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. So if you don't if you don't know about it, there's a is it mattermost.eclipse.org. So matter. How many people here know Slack? All right. So how many people here have ever heard of Mattermost? Okay. Yeah. So so Mattermost is basically an open source equivalent to Slack, and we have an instance hosted at eclipse.org, and there's channels there for quite a few different projects. So that's a it's a way for you to engage with the project teams in a more with a more modern user interface. Um, so you can definitely you can definitely try that. It's not the same sort of not really the same as discourse, but it's definitely an improvement over uh, over the forums as well. Yep. Okay. So you, you know there are various ways of interacting with 
the Eclipse team, project teams, right? Buxilla is definitely one of them. So rather than forums, you can use Metamorph or even Stack Overflows, right? Because Stack Overflow is slowly becoming the common place for people to ask questions and get responses, right? Not just for Eclipse, and that's there for a lot many other projects as well. <laughs> right and just to add on so that um i think we are talking about a personal experience here right i mean the development environment should cater to your um, a personal interest. So no matter whatever you provide in there, right? I know there are Eclipse IDE users where even if there is eGit, I know people who actively use this command line, Git, right? So, <laughs> so, so there are there are certain practices that we follow, and we continue to follow that. What would happen definitely is that there will be a hybrid approach. For especially for to cater to those people who are whom I consider as advanced users, right? Because they know exactly what they're doing. For the other set of users, what I would see happening is in terms of getting a way to provision their development environment pretty fast, right? It could be a Docker image, right? Just to put it out there, so that you don't deal with the complexities of developing. I mean, setting up your environment, you just get your environment for yourself, right? So that's another way to think about it, right? And of course, it could be on the cloud as well, right? Not just the Docker. Right? You do realize you just described Eclipse Che, right? <laughs> <laughs> Was that on purpose? Part of it, yes, Mike, because it is actually the midway between from desktop to all the way to cloud, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it, I mean, Eclipse Che is basically turning in a way into, I mean, your workspace is, do is, is a Docker image. That's right. And that's sort of the, the way that they're going. But I mean, actually, um, so Jay, my answer to your question is, I think Danny's right. I mean, for the next five years, it's going to be both. But I think the long-term trend is absolutely everything's going towards the browser. Um, and if for no other reason, then I mean, old guys like Danny and I will retire and get out of the way, and the young people all want everything in the browser. So, um, so that I mean, the trend is, um, I think, the. Tr the trend over time is is pretty clear, um, and that's fine. I mean, I'm you know, five years ago I was one of the guys that was was saying things like tools will never be in the browser. They'll you know they're not. It'll never be fast enough. It'll never be good enough. And then you know the Orion team showed me an editor that running in Chrome is faster than the the Eclipse editor, right? Um, or at least as fast. And so you know. Part of that is because the browsers got way faster. Um, part of that is because people started writing good code. But I mean, it's just I think the trend is absolutely moving in that in that direction. Um, of course, a hundred years from now, there's still going to be a bunch of people arguing whether BI is better than Emacs. Um, but everybody else will be using tools in the browser. Okay, that's right. Yes, I'm good.
Okay, so thanks, Ankur. Thanks for actually that was my closing topic as well, right? So um, you heard about boomerang, right? Yeah, it's just coming back to you all, right? Because that's exactly where the community need to step in, in terms of contributing and by bringing in ideas, at least creating a bug item saying that I would really like to have this happen here, right? So by the way, in the cloud space, there are innovations happening, right? Part of it is in terms of right now more about the infrastructure, in not the cloud infrastructure, but the framework of the cloud, the cloud-based environment, right? And a couple of years down the line, I'm pretty sure there will be more ways of doing that, right? With a click, the way browsers add extensions, right? That's exactly the way Orion gives you the ability to bring in new features. It's essentially a browser extension, right? And that that's the way it will move towards, right? And it'll it'll be it it should come from the community, right? How many of you use GitHub here, right? How many of you use more than one extensions to GitHub? Okay. So if you haven't looked at the GitHub integrations and extensions, you should look at those. There are a variety of them. And the model in which they integrate with GitHub and the way, uh, actually, let me put it this way. They, they actually enhance your experience. It's not about integrating with GitHub. It's about enhancing your overall experience, right? That, it, that's similar to the way even Orion is doing with respect to the web IDE and helping you install capabilities that you need, right, in a very lightweight way, right? But most of it, I would request that it should come from, because it has to start with a purpose, right? As a user, you would know exactly that this is what I would need, right, to make, to improve my productivity. So if it comes from you, makes all the difference. First is, put in the request. Second is, put in the code if you can. which also proves the point that uh, s such additions uh, should come from additional plugins. Uh, you should not expect this, these things from JDT because there's a lot of groundwork to be done just in JDT and JDT is best as just handling Java as it is and everything that adds smartness and, and machine learning, et cetera, should be done on top. And I think we do have the uh, API that allows all this and code recommenders actually proves we do. That's right. Good point. Thanks, Sergey. Okay. Right. I had one quick question for the audiences. Uh, if people want to share, what was their main takeaway from the conference? What was your main takeaway from the conference? Anyone else? I'm so happy to know I'm not disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't mention John Lynch. 
Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Others had no takeaways. want to do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> Exposure to trends that are going on. Okay, good. That's good. So one of the objectives have been met. OK. Yeah. In the past, when we asked this question, we had to ask people to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Going once. All right, I think uh, yeah. pretty much, uh, did you guys have any other questions? Else we can wrap up and call it a conference. Sure. OK. <laughs> you all picked the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Google guy is right in front of you. Why don't you ask him? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't belong to either of the companies, but as a user, I can tell you it's a survival of the fittest. I think Android Studio beats what Eclipse had hands down. That's user pure. And so that's my understanding why, why the decision was made. I don't know, you guys might have better insights and It could be, certainly, no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah, so from my perspective, it was just a really, really bad decision by Google. Not that I have an opinion, but I mean, so like, like one of my like major frustrations with that whole thing is if you go into Bugzilla and look at the number of bug reports that were ever filed by the Android development team against Eclipse, it was, I think I, I think I, if I, I really looked around, I think I found 12. Um, and if you look at the amount of investment that they've put into Android Studio and imagine that they had applied that to actually fixing the problems that they, that they, they thought they had with Eclipse, um, they could have worked with an, a, a community um, to solve those problems, and I think the end result would have been much better for Google. Now, I mean, what they've basically done um, is handed their developer franchise to a for-profit company. And I, I just boggles my mind that somebody at Google thinks that's a good idea. Um, I mean, somebody, somebody at Google made a really dumb decision. They're gonna have to live with the consequences. It's great to say that, you know, as a developer, Android Studio is a better experience. They could have made Eclipse that better experience, but now what they've done is they've given JetBrains their developer franchise. And I, like, frankly, that's a really dumb thing for Google to do. And JetBrains is coming up with their own new version of Kotlin and Flames, which is even more interesting in the whole ecosystem. Yeah, so, like, I mean, Think this, just think this through. Google is one of the biggest brands in the world with developers, and they handed the franchise to another company. That's stupid. It just is. No. <laughs> they never talk to us, ever. 
Yeah, that's why Danny mentioned you're asking the wrong team. We read it in the newspapers just like everybody else. Uh, speaking of something that's starved for resources, <laughs> like if, if you want to have Eclipse tools for Android, I mean, there's a project called Anmore at Eclipse um, that's trying to keep those things alive. And it's an entirely community-led effort, um, but so far they've been really struggling to get people to step up to help them. So if you're interested in doing that, um, you know, any amount of energy you can provide would be deeply appreciated. That's right, and that's a, I think that's a good closing as well, right? In order to make it more vibrant, more lively, and more uh, bring more innovation, right? Need participation from the community. What keeps Eclipse going is the community, right? Community involves each and every one of us, right? So it's we, right? It's we are all together. It's not just um, you, okay? So that's the mode we are to get into. Right, and this is the first baby step that we are taking in in Indian uh, in the Eclipse community in India towards it. Right, so we, when you go back to your work, right, to your office, we would like you to spread the word. Right, I mean, excite your organization about Eclipse Summit. Right, and also encourage more people to actually participate and contribute. Right, and next and for the next edition when the call for papers come, right, do refer good topics right and submit good um, talks that's that's another way to contribute and not not just eclipse summit india right so eclipse conferences are happening around the world as well right so which will be published on eclipse.org yeah that, that's all for me <laughs>